Is there money in solo content creation from the short form aspect? How much money yep. are you making on TikTok? Let's talk about it right now. Sure. Oh uh, on sure. TikTok from the creator from the creativity beta. Okay, I'll pull it up. Actually. Oh, you got to answer. <laughs> Hey, one thing about me, I don't gatekeep, all right? Yeah, so let's talk about him. That's what it is. That's, no, that's, that's, that's the UMD in him. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Samuel, you're from Salisbury, that's Ronaldo, by the way. So, hey, all, still in North Carolina, Omar. So, <laughs> over the course of six months on TikTok, I've made thirteen thousand dollars. Mm. Six right? months. So okay. that's like so that's like a thing where the creativity beta it pays you, but it's not like it's not like enough. I think the thing goes out for like brand deals. Oh, when, you low with, in the chat. when you when you work with like a when you work with like a direct TV, when you work with like these brands that like have the money and stuff like that, that's when it like it pays dividends where it's like, hey, we'll do this one video for like 10K or hey, we'll do this one, like we'll do four tweets for 5K. It's like, there is money in social media, like content creation. It just, it's just a matter of like, it it comes and goes. It's like never really consistent. You might have like a big month and then you might have a month of like no activity. Um, but I feel like when you put those together, like it's yeah. like, you, I feel like I am not at the position where I could be a fool. Like I could just make money off of the creativity beta and be fine. I live in Los Angeles. Rent is high. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like that. And also I just don't want to, I just don't want to be like dependent. I don't want my whole, I don't want my, like if I went and did the creativity beta, like, and that was my main source of income, the anxiety I would get from that. Cause it would be like one day, cause one day TikTok would be like, oh, actually your RPM is like 13 cents now. Yeah. All right. Like that, that's the kind of thing where I'm like, it, it's, uh, it's nice to have, it's nice to have like extra, it's nice to have like that extra thing, but like that on top of my salary allows me to like live comfortably in LA, which is great. Yeah. yeah. I, I think what you're speaking to, and uh, this is my situation as well, just trying to be well-rounded as possible because of how volatile the industry is. Just try to set that base, try to, try to be, um, try, try to have multiple platforms if you can. Um, but you know, in terms of like social media presence, be present on different platforms so that like when you're having a bad month over here, oh, you can make that up over here because this, this platform is better suited to perform in January than it is for this platform who's better suited to perform in June when the NBA finals are on. As I know, shout, shout out to Love, by the way. Um, Dude, Lo makes some fire TikToks, though. He make a lot yeah. of money. Man. Nah, Bro, I ain't gonna lie. That, that question that right tech, there, I want to ask him that too. Cause that, that tech listen. TikTok, that tech TikTok area, yeah. bro, you get the nice equipment. TikTok, mm -hmm. That tech TikTok, bro, everything looks clean and crisp. You get like the, the people will be sending you that like that that the really nice stuff. Yeah. I'll be I'll be watching. I'll be like, yo, uh, insert brand here to send me this. I'm like, yo, must be nice, yo. That's, <laughs> But he just, but he just said it. He said it in the chat himself. He was like, "From ad revenue, it's just not, it's not gonna get it done. Uh, but from sponsorships and stuff like that, you can't add that." I wanna, yeah. I wanna be clear. Oh, Black Boy down there too. I wanna be clear to to folks. He, Kofi just said 13k over the course of six months. Yep. That's what is that? 26k a year. But if you do, if you do, yeah, it's two, it's twenty one hundred dollars a month pre tax. Yeah, and it depends and it all depends on like how much your video is bang. So like for this for this month, it was like I made two thousand like two thousand five hundred, right? Two thousand five hundred a month, which like is like that feels like an extra paycheck yeah. to me. It's yeah, not yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. not like my whole thing. So I'm like, oh, this is cool because it, it, and it's way better than like being on a platform that just doesn't pay you anything. Like, you know, when like they when they took out reels bonuses, I was like, it's Cooked. not gonna like be completely like debilitating for me but it was cool to have that extra kind of thing you know so um, i'll dumb it down for everybody in case um there's somebody watching doesn't understand a word of what we're talking about um you get to blow you get to blow up on tiktok even further beyond because i won't say that you haven't already my god i'm trying to copy <laughs> um, you you blow up on youtube i see you uploading every day you blow up on youtube you blow up on the twitch which platform would you like to be at in its peak by the end of 2024 Oh my god! I Twitch is. I feel like Twitch is the hardest platform to grow. Like start, yeah. start, starting from scratch. <laughs> starting from scratch. Yeah. You, like from a scratch. lot. A lot of people. A lot of people come like ask me or like. 
hey, I'm getting started on this content creation. I just started Twitch. I'm like, is that it's the is that hardest first one. platform? <laughs> yeah. it's it's one. I'm like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm keeping it real. I'm keeping real with you. Like, you gotta, you gotta siphon people to Twitch. But when, like, but when you're there, like, Twitch is exponential growth. It really fascinates me because it's like you see how like your Twitch website is like organized usually by most watched to least watched. And then you get to a point where it kind of like the snowball effect, like mm. it, getting to that snowball effect is tough. And I would love to be like able to, you know, I am a Twitch partner, but I would love to be able to just like stream on Twitch more, have that like do numbers or whatever that. And then YouTube as well, because I feel like TikTok is the best way to like get people to follow you. But like Twitch and like YouTube is the best place to like truly build communities, like people that like, mm really ride for your content in terms of like people that just like see your content as like oh okay if i don't if i'm not feeling it, i'm just gonna scroll to like the infinite void of short form content creation i do yeah. i do see low down there low you are invited literally anytime because there's a lot of these questions that i want to ask to you as well just to get that perspective because bso's knows i i am like the thing about tiktok is that if you want to make it a living we're talking about making it a living yeah. as opposed to as a side thing at the, in this specific like point yeah yeah I, I the idea of living like from brand deal to brand deal sponsorship to sponsorship is scary to me so i would want anybody to break that down but i do want to ask you this kofi about um something that you said about you know the journalism uh, uh abilities and stuff that you got from school and how it carries over to um your your content creation path would you advise anybody that's going to school for journalism to start on their own side project as just a backup? Because you talked about how, you know, the the volatility of the media world, if if they don't like you one week, two weeks, three weeks, or one month, two month, three month, the whole channel could tank, the whole platform could tank, and then you can't log into Slack. So do you think I, a lot of those kids should start their own platform? A thousand percent. A thousand percent. And I think that college is the best place to do it. Cause college, mm, say it again. Co say it college, again. College is the best. Like college is the best place. Depending on, depending on how you spend your time, college is the best place to like truly hone your skills and like. Cause whatever, I feel like y'all y'all understand. Whenever y'all start making content for the first time, it's gonna be bad. Yeah, it's gonna be or bad. It, it, first like, your first video, I, I you look at your first video now and you're like, oh man, this is who, who made this? Was this this iMovie? Like what like who was I was like what was I doing? Like, you know, like shit like that. It was so, iMovie. What do you was mean? IMovie. It was iMovie. It was iMovie with all the with all the transitions built in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, he thought she was cooking with the thought the, you did something when you paid the five ninety nine. You was like, Oh yeah, I got this exclusive. Not too much. Shit. Not too much. Yeah. But <laughs> I feel like now it's cool to see that TikTok is the great like it feels like it levels the playing field in terms of like building creators in the sports world where they're like, cause like me growing up, my goal was to be like a baseball play by play announcer. Right. Mm -hmm. And like me growing up, but me growing up, YouTube like didn't like, wasn't what it is. Like the content creation thing is this is still like relatively brand new. If we look at the grand scheme of like every industry and like career paths, like the industry is still brand new, like YouTube, is only like what 18 it's like some 7 15 18 years old like youtube yeah, still yeah, like the potential like for like being a creator there's this one creator right now he's the radio voice for the los angeles clippers and i think that he did a lot of he did a lot of videos on sports broadcasting in college being like here here i am covering i forget what college he went to i think it might be usc but it was like here here i am as a college like play by play creator um being able to like call these games or whatnot and like here's the behind the scenes of how it really is and it's really interesting content and then he gets that clippers role and he's still able to do the social media stuff on the side so this stuff like no matter if that's your full-time job or like if, the, if your goal is to like have a job but still do the content creation on the side or full-time it's best to start as early as possible because this stuff doesn't happen overnight like it takes it takes like years to just be like like really and if it does happen overnight that's like the few and far between one ones. like one of one of them ones you know yeah you're right no, it's like you, oh i thought you no you're good you're good that was no it. no i was about to say you spitting bro i could i couldn't agree more as a person that uh granted i didn't get espn but uh i got i got my own <laughs> uh, little internship 
And yeah. let me tell you something now, Kofi, correct me if I'm wrong, but the main reason why I did YouTube outside of hating my job is I'm looking at what's going on in the studio. I'm like, damn. That YouTube shit ain't shit. <laughs> like, man, it is like it's nothing. The idea of being a long witted person that, like me, for example, does not work on national television. When I seen them producers in the back, all right, hey, hey you got 45 seconds to fader. You got 30 seconds to fader. You got 15 seconds to fader. On here, shit, we can we could troll for the next hour talking about the exact <laughs> same thing and yeah. not and get away with it. So I'm telling you, there's so many practices. And that's why I love that you brought up college because we've had the good discussion all the time on here. And maybe that's what we'll have uh, later on in this podcast. Hell, but uh, we've had the discussion all the time as college is scam. And I've always said the price. Yes. The experience. Fuck no, because I'm not going to lie. Like being able to learn these things and then be like, OK, how can I twist this? Granted, at a simpler level, but do it on my own. You really find yourself there. And it, it's it was it was kind of beautiful seeing. And no self glazed, but seeing me take like lessons that I've learned from a much higher entity and be like, yo, what if I just <laughs> get a little Logitech, <laughs> get a get a little blue Yeti and ball up? Yeah. So it, it, it's really nice. I recommend all of my communication majors, sports management majors, all of you, man. Start your own shit, even if it's not a long term goal, just so you can truly see the difference as well. And I, I know I, I know I, I know I made a, a joke about like iMovie and stuff, but the the good thing about content creation is that there are so many free resources mm-hmm. out there mm-hmm. and like free or cheap resources out there where it's like, yeah, the you might be able to get like a sure mic, a USB sure mic for uh two hundred and eighty nine dollars or whatnot. You might be able to do that. However, there are other mic options that still get the job done. And I feel like at that first place, I feel like the content itself, like once the content, you get the content, like topics, like you get people that like rock with what you're making. I feel like then you can be like, oh, let me like splurge on this webcam or whatever. Um, so I think that like DaVinci Resolve is free. I think that that's the free edit software, right? And DaVinci A lot Resolve was switching over to that. DaVinci know. Resolve switched over. <laughs> switched over. I'm I'm still I'm still Adobe Premiere because okay. I I um. Well, I work at well working at Vox. That comes with being you get at, the like, free. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, not, oh yeah. Real, then, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. So, and I've been using Premiere for nine years, so it's gonna be. Oh, so yeah. I'm just this point here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's just so many like free resources out there. Whether it's like, hey, I need to edit software. Hey, um, certain like graphics places like Canva, I think has a free option. Mm-hmm. Whether it's like, yeah, you might have a watermark thing but like there's so many like different ways to start and it, it it also i feel like another thing is getting over the fear of what people are going to think about your content i feel like that really delayed me for a little bit i was because in college i was terrified at that uh the the red youtube dislike bar i was afraid of like <laughs> i was really afraid of like dropping a video and just seeing it all red and i'm like oh man maybe i'm not but like getting over that too also was like a, a big thing i, I think, have oh go ahead Omar. i think i think another thing and, and we can move on if we're moving on but i think yeah. i think another thing too and this is my perspective on like those that get into the worlds of media but even like the guy that you just said that's the clippers play-by-play dude mm-hmm. i think his job is like niche i want to niche might like even be like small like a small way to say what it is that is such a unique job that I would be so fearful of being laid off uh, and getting another job that's like that, that I would I would have to start doing something else because if yeah. he did get if he did get fired, and mind you, he in theory he has two basketball teams in his town, so oh thank God. But let's just say it's like the OKC announcer or whatever the case may be. If he gets fired, I think in Oklahoma there's no other professional sports team to even try to transition over to. So then at that point, you're looking at, hey, if I want to get back into the exact same line of work, I would for sure have to relocate or maybe do some like triple A ball or something like that, make significantly less, I would think at least, and then start from there. Um, but if you, ha- if you have your own thing, you could still cover it or do something along those lines in your own way yep. and still be able to, you know, live your life in that regards. That's what that's what got me out of play by play, like wanting to be a play by play person. I got to Maryland, and the thing about the University of Maryland that really separates from a lot of journalism schools is that there are a lot of journalism schools that for two years you don't even touch the equipment, right? Mm-hmm. But the University of Maryland, they they were like, 
hey, you can be able to call these games like freshman year. You could be able to call these like sports. Yeah. We had a lot. We had a lot. I know we got a, we got rid of a couple of teams, but there were still a lot of opportunities. When I tell you, I called a doubleheader play by play for baseball. You were done. Right. I'm t- I was I was yeah. done, dude. First game first game went well. I was like, all right, cool. We are in the third inning of the second game. And I'm like, I don't think I. I don't think that's I want to do this anymore. This nigga right? commentated on 40 yeah. hours of baseball yeah, in one day. Rules, man. <laughs> and, I, then, and, then, and then I took a look back. I went home and I looked back. I see I see Jim Nance on the TV. He's been working for 40 years. Like he's had that job for a long time. Like the, the turnover, the turnover in like Mike play Gorman by been play doing it for like 30 years. Yeah. But there is like you have to wait for someone to like retire Die. or Die. pass Die. away <laughs> for even for even a chance. At putting your resume into that seat, because a lot of people grew up with dreams of being like a play-by-play broadcaster, being like, "Oh, I want to be, I want to do that." Like, I was like, I looked at it, I was like, "There's, I, I'm out, man." That's, that's, too, that's too uphill a bad battle for me, man. Ain't that, ain't that all the Knicks announcers right now, Kevin? They, they're just talking about Kevin Harlan and them. They're just talking to Marv Albert. They're just talking about getting out of it, like this year, next year, so finally somebody else could move in. I'm Jim like Nance Brian. finally. Jim Nance just retired from I think calling March Madness, but he still like he still covers oh, every other. He was like, "This is my last March Madness," and then he's still doing the Masters, right? He's still doing uh, I think football, right? And like he's Marv doing all Albert. Sports, right? Marv yeah. Albert is eighty two. Um, Jesus, and, and he's still. But that's why he be sounding like he uh chewing on his guys, own. Man. Yes, Jeez. playoff games, finals games. Yeah. Yes. The Celtics have had the same one since the '80s. Mike Gorman and Tom Heinsohn. Tom Heinsohn just died a couple years ago, and then um, Mike Gorman. This is his last year. So yeah, those those jobs are like legacy jobs. I ain't gonna lie. But it's, it's like so hard to get into those. But even for Kevin Harlan, I want Kevin Harlan to broadcast a Super Bowl so bad, right? But whenever CBS gets it, it's Jim Nance. Like even even if you're like at this, they will still be like there might be someone that's still like yeah. not in your way, but like there's still someone here being like this is the guy for this, and I'm like, I was no like, Kate, I, I, no I Kate. I think that's why Rachel Nichols made such a big deal about it when she went through her little thing oh, with the ESPN. Yeah, because yeah, once you get it, like, damn, I've got it for the next fifty, sixty years potentially if it if it goes well, but. She, yeah. there, there are a lot of people in the sports media industry as soon as they like leave like a big channel like a big a big tv network or big there's only a t- like two places three places like there's only a few places that you can go and it's so competitive yeah. right i think like, that's the media industry in, in general though because yeah. i even made that point within youtube space like let's say you you end up being the editor for a sideman right oh shit i got i got this crazy job they're paying me well it's probably six figures for the sideman Let's say they lay you off in two years or some shit. And now you're used to that lifestyle. Six figures a year as an editor. You haven't built your own platform. Who? I, I, how many YouTubers, how many, you know what I'm saying, social media presences are going to give you that type of salary? I I, I feel like I, if you work at Sidemen, they're probably giving you like benefits at that point too. So we're talking about like what, Mr. Beast level? AMP maybe? Like that, that saying, no cap, of, that, No cap, that was me. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> That was legitimately me. Yeah. So, like, how do how do you find that replacement to that job? And within the media industry, like, a lot of the jobs are hella niche. That, like, yo, th- you don't have much options. And even those options, are they even hiring? And even if they are hiring, it's still gonna be hella competitive because a lot my, of people want that job. So. Yeah, my my option was to move to Los Angeles, or I was about to move to North Carolina. To be honest with you, that was literally the uproot yourself, move yourself from Atlanta, and. Go to Los Angeles and hope 100 Thieves was playing, paying, and then, or go to uh, North Carolina. Yeah, no, nah, it's it's Beast wicked. Yeah, be it with Beast, and that that <laughs> fell through too. I ain't gonna lie, that fell through too. Mister Beast fell through too. So you gotta be living yeah. in Greenville, dog. <laughs> I, was, I, I was gonna do it though. I ain't gonna lie, I was gonna do it. I was legitimate. We we had conversations and all that. I was gonna do it, but yeah, we, we were we were preparing for something at that time. <laughs> 